Hi, how's it going? It's actually kind of a bit of a while since I've uh, shown my face to the camera, but hi, welcome, how's it going? So I can probably guess what some people are thinking right now. Oh my God, Justin, are you serious? You're making a video without talking about Crash Bandicoot? You monster. You're an absolute disgrace to the Crash Bandicoot community. Why don't you crawl yourself into a hole and don't come out? But yeah, to be basically honest, I've always wanted to make this video for quite a while, ever since I've actually seen the recipe of this food that's actually from a video game, and I'll actually just show the game right now. So today we're gonna to be making the Lebec Curry from Persona 5. Uh, Persona 5, for those who don't know what it is, it's a JRPG turn-based game uh, that's full of interesting characters and an engaging soundtrack that you can get yourself hooked onto. It's a really good game and I highly recommend trying it out, but I also do recommend checking out Royals as well, as it is basically just the same game but with updated features. And you do end up staying at this place called the Lebec Cafe, and one of the features about this cafe is it features a food called the Lebec Curry, and that is what we're gonna be making today. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my kitchen. This is where I cook. This is where I get absolutely high on caffeine. This is my chopping station. Uh, please ignore my pickles over there. And this, my friends, is where the magic happens. And another thing I'll mention before we move on is I will list the amount of ingredients and how much measurements I use in the description box below if I can remember it. But I will kind of say everything as I go along. So with that said, let's get started. And keep in mind, I don't have every single ingredient for this recipe, but I will point some of them out during this video. So first things first, you will need a small pan because we're making a roux. That's right, this curry does indeed have a roux. So to make it, throw in a knob of butter, which is around one tablespoon, and stir it around to make sure it's all melted. Meanwhile, I'll grab my curry spice mix. I am kind of cheating a bit, but all the spices from the original recipe is all contained in this spice mix, so there's really no harm at all. When the butter's all melted, add in around a tablespoon's worth of your curry spices. Cook for around 45 seconds until everything's aromatic, then add in one tablespoon of flour and mix around for a couple of minutes until you cook out the rawness of the flour taste. Once everything's done, set it aside and prepare for the next stage, the beef. Grab a big pot along with 500 grams of beef, any kind will do just fine. Put in a teaspoon's worth of oil and cook the beef in batches. The reason why is because you don't want to overcrowd everything. Cook all of your beef until every side is nice and brown. Once that's done, transfer the beef into a bowl and remove all the remaining fat in the pot. You can keep it if you want, that's completely up to you. Next up is the vegetables. Place in one diced onion, I chose red because of its color, then cook for a couple of minutes until it begins to sweat down. We're not trying to brown it, just sweating it off. Next, add in one grated carrot, one diced apple, two cloves of sliced garlic, and a thumb sides worth of sliced ginger. Cook for a couple of minutes till everything once again looks like it's beginning to sweat, then add in your one liter of beef stock. Put your beef back into the mixture and get it to come to a boil and simmer for around 45 minutes to an hour until the stock has reduced down a bit. I had to move the pot to a different stove cause the other one was smaller. Once it's reduced, add in your curry roux. Taste it to see if you're happy with how hot your food will be. You can always add more of your curry mix if it's not spicy for your liking. The final step is to add in the quote unquote secret ingredients to how Sojuro makes his curry taste so good. Add in a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, a teaspoon of honey, one small block size of chocolate, typically 70% cocoa. I would use one tablespoon of instant coffee, but I don't have it on me at the moment, and I could use my beans to grind it up, but it'll be very gritty. So we'll have to go for the next idea and add in some black coffee. Roughly, I added two tablespoons of that in. I then checked the recipe to see if I was missing anything, and I forgot to add one tablespoon of Greek yogurt, which I'll do right now. Season with salt and keep tasting till you're happy with the finished product, then serve it into a bowl and now it's time to consume it. Okay, so this part of the section is filmed a day later. Um, so yeah, my apologies on that, but the reason why is because I had um, last minute decisions that I had to do afterwards. So 
Pretty much after making the curry, I'm separated into portions. Now it is recommended that before serving you should have it with rice, but of course you can have whatever type of rice that you want. I just went for the old traditional uh, brown rice. And basically what I did is once I cooked up the rice, I just reheated everything and then transferred it into a bowl. And that's what we have here. This is the uh, Lebec curry. And of course with tradition of serving a Lebec curry, always should have a black coffee with you beside it, just to keep the tradition going in Persona 5. All right, let's actually give this a try and see if this is actually pretty good or something I should avoid. Okay, first off, Damn, that is spicy. Um, but secondly, it's sort of like a hot, sweet curry in a way, and I think that's probably due to the apples and that little bit of honey that was added. But yeah, this is, this is actually really nice. Of course, you know, you don't technically have to have beef in it, um, cause you can have chicken, uh, fish, or even vegetarian. This is pretty much just a base of it, and once you've learned the base, you can pretty much just put in whatever. If I had to, like, critique one thing, though, um, I would probably say that I think this curry kind of does need a little bit more vegetables, like maybe some potatoes or peas or something, you know, just to kind of bring everything together, but, you know, other than that, this is... this is actually really good. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend trying it out if you do love Persona 5 and if you're interested in how the curry is made and if you're interested in trying it for yourself then by all means go ahead. But yeah, hope you liked this video and I thank you all for watching.